Togon asks, have you ever taken a long break from a project? If so, how do you guys pick it back up? I'm struggling and keep procrastinating. Oh man. Uh, it's... That might be for a number of different reasons. Togon, why do you think that... Why did you stop working on it? And why do you think that you're not excited? Because I figured that... Um, Audhain uh, says, usually I just sit, look at my to-dos issues and start fixing them. Yeah, I think it's it's good if you have a clear thing to just start doing on it. Just anything. Just, uh, like, just to get yourself going. Um, have a string to pull at. So if you had a to-do and there are, are like little bugs or like things that you can just nudge, just so that you, I mean, get the, the build running and get the thing deployed and like a new version. Um, yeah, Talgon says, I quit because it was difficult, didn't fi always find good resources on the subject on the net, and now I'm dreading it, I guess. Yeah, so that's, it's a little bit like that fear of failure or like fear of like finding yourself in these rabbit holes. Uh, so my my psychologist always yaps on me to be uh, work with being okay with um, being uncomfortable, and the way you do that is by exposing yourself for small pieces of discomfort. So uh, in your case, it might be just to break it down into as small as small things as possible to show because your mind is now painting like this big dark picture of what what is going what is going to expose you to so uh, it might be interesting for you to just like, research this little thing and research this little thing to just make the thing the research a little bit less scary in your case uh, i find that it's very important in all side projects and stuff that you're working for, working on, to, I always keep like this to-do log so that I know, know a little bit where I left off. I used to tend to have this long notes document so that I always have like this, this little strand to pull at. Taskos, mm -hmm. ask, can you pronounce my name? No, I can't. Hmm. Jump out says accepting failure is easy after the fact. Finding success, success is tougher. <laughs> yeah. And underscore Funk says, oh yeah, absolutely make a roadmap.md file. Yeah. And uh, I, um, David is uh, doing a lot of these pull requests where he keeps like a to-do list in the pull request. It's really really nice. So that you can like pick up all pull requests easily. Talgon, thank you. I'll try to break the project down into smaller parts. I like that suggestion. Yeah, yeah. Find find the next action. Just you don't even need to break the project down into uh, into its components. You just need to break, find one to break off. And if it's uh, if it's too big, uh, then um, you just break that up. Like if you find yourself, you as long as you find yourself procrastinating, just keep it keep breaking it. And uh, be kind to yourself. Understand that yeah, you, you can't make yourself do something that you don't want to do. So if you find yourself dreading a, a task because it's too big, there's nothing you can do about that. You just have to break it down into a smaller part. View yourself as a very, very difficult child. Underscore funk. Uh, also, having time away from a project will help you write it so that it's clear. Too much consistent time requires anyone else touching it so that uh, they have uh, to have that mental investment. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, having those breaks might give you uh, 
yeah, it can be advantageous in a way. Hmm. That's cool. It's called divide and conquer. The concept is older than Earth. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. That's how the universe solves problems. How do you eat an elephant? One very small bite at a time. Hmm. Talk on difficult child, not too far off from reality, baby. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think that life, like interacting with yourself and interacting with others, team members and bosses and significant others and, and siblings and all other high maintenance, like relations that require a lot of energy and tends to be very frustrating, they become a lot easier if you start thinking about the inner child of people. Like we all have slow things that we picked up along the way when we grew up and then, then makes us an, into uh, who we are and how we parse reality. And if you uh, view people and yourself, most importantly, that's the hardest one, with that amount of empathy and like trying to understand like, okay, how does this person work and how does this person work on the inside and how can I get how can I behave to get what I want from this person and from this person's needs things become a lot easier and you become a lot happier and less judgmental because if you operate around the assumption that like people are people are, and yourself are adults uh, and are reasonable all the time you're gonna be very happy be unhappy because that is not how the world works. That's like expecting it to never rain and then it rains all the time. Uh, Harrison Pickering, do you have any advice on how to get shit done? I made no progress on a uh, project for six months because I keep changing what tech the project will use when I learn new stuff. Okay, so it's important to understand when it comes to procrastination, you have to understand that it's sort of, um, it's an avoidance strategy for your brain. Um, there might be a lot of reasons why you do that. Um, and you have to like dive inside yourself why you are doing that. So like if you like if you're constantly changing the technology in your project, uh, that is because there is probably some underlying fear in you that like you just don't want to, you just don't want to finish the project. You you want to avoid that activity. Um, for me, it is that I find that I tend to just enjoy the abstract of a project much more than the actual project, because when I think about a project and I like draw all these database schemas and. Uh, like write a business model for the project and like this is gonna do this and this is gonna do that that is so nice because everything is perfect like the business model works perfectly um, everything like the APIs I'm interacting with they're super easy to work with um, and everything is tested and like everything is you know everything is fine and dandy because he's living in the idea world um, and this is also why it's so nice to just write frameworks and why it's so nice to like write engines because that allows your idea and your concept to stay in the idea world. But once you start getting closer to shipping, it starts your idea, your very nice little cuddling nice idea starts entering the realm of the real and then compromises will have to be made. You will have to write ugly code, you will have to uh, start um, like start skimping on tests. You have to start like writing, writing dirty things. You have to start ignoring edge cases. Um, you have to start fighting with the designer. You have uh, you're gonna get like uh, customers that don't understand your design. Like it's so much things that are just sad. You know, like craft a craft is only fun in itself when it's in the abstract. Once your craft is uh, servicing other people, when it starts becoming like a real product, a real thing that other people uses, then 
the craft becomes unimportant and the demands of the, the outside world becomes unimportant and secondary to the craft. And that means that the craft is no long, now no longer fun. Uh, and this is hard to accept because like, that means that in order to push through, you need to be very, very clear about why you are doing this so that you can stop caring about the fact that your code isn't like up to snuff. Uh, and if it's like, if it's up to snuff, then it's up to snuff in order to be of enough quality for, um, for the end users, you know? So yeah, like it might be that you're just not, you don't actually, you, what I'm saying is that you don't actually want to ship it. And uh, you need to fix that. You need to uh, like really search within yourself and see like, do you actually want to ship it? <coughs> what would that actually give you? Um, and um, the answer to that might be um, no. It might be that the project actually gives you most by staying in its unshipped state. Because once you start shipping something, you stop learning. Like you never learn anything in the in the shipping state or thing. It's just like fixing random bugs and doing compromises. Ask yourself, do I want to ship it? Figure out like why you want to ship it. Then the focus on fucking shipping it. And don't switch the engines around because that's a really good way of not shipping a shipping a product. Hello. Oh. Hello. Uh, hope you enjoyed that clip. If you did, you should know that it was brought into existence indirectly by a sponsorship of remote.work. Thank you so much for sponsoring the show, remote.work. Remote.work claims to be the number one destination to find and list incredible remote jobs. New remote jobs are posted every day in programming, engineering, design, product, uh, DevOps, you name it. Check them out using the link in the episode description to show them that you came from here. Thank you so much, Remote Work, for sponsoring the show. Also, if you like this clip, you should know that it came from a live stream that I do every Monday and every Wednesday at 7 a.m. Pacific time on twitch.tv slash funfunfunction. You can watch a full uh, version of this particular uh, live stream if you want uh, using a link in the episode description. Or if you prefer to stay on YouTube, you can just watch another clip right here. Or if you really like this, you can subscribe here. I am MPJ. Until next time, stay curious.